To me, the two words field notebook are among the most romantic in the English language. They conjure Charles Darwin hunching on Galapagoan rocks describing finches, Margaret Mead filling a book with the antics of Samoan girls, Virginia Woolf penning her diary after a day's tramp through the Downs, George Orwell hunched in a Barcelona cafe reporting on the Spanish Civil War. Muddy boot biologists, mosquito slapping naturalists, war reporters, diarists, memoirists, novelists, literary journalists, urban bloggers, ethnographers, voyagers, and myriad other explorers and watchers. I can see them all clearly in my mind's eye, jotting in situ their observations of the world. What these varied scribblers all have in common is the impulse to keep notes on life's offerings, to keep a field notebook. To take time in the midst of, or at the conclusion of, a long day's worth of immersion, to set down experience in ink, or nowadays on a screen, is a time-honored method for capturing the vitality and stuff of life. The first field notebook I ever kept was for a behavioral study of whales. Hooked by its pleasures, I continued the practice for an oral history of Argentine sheep ranchers and then an exploration of French bread, and I've kept up the practice ever since. The discovery of the field notebook of taking notes on life as it swirled around me was to me a revelation, as portable paint and easel must have been for the 19th century discoverers of painting en plein air. It was also a revolution, a way to grab the spindly leg of life as it flickered by and pin it forever to the page. More, it was a way to live, and to savor that lived life. But to keep a notebook is not so easy as it might seem, and especially not to do well. My writing students often arrive at my door with bundles of journals and notes that they wish to turn into vivid memoirs, essays, or travel accounts. Each and every person has unique tales to tell. The one thing they too often lack, though, is adequate notes on the very people and places they want to write about. Their records don't have the precision and richness that cause a place, scene, person, or emotion to quicken on the page. I have experienced such failings myself. I arrived home from my first year and a half in Patagonia, for instance, having not recorded a single conversation with the ranchers I afterward yearned to write about. Years later, when I went to my basement to excavate my supposedly rich archive of youthful journals for a memoir, I discovered there was nothing in those pages worth using in a sentence. Most of the writing was generalizing and caterwauling on the page. There was no mention of the cream puffs eaten, or account of the intense conversations my friend Allie and I had about how to catch a boy. The specifics that might have brought those adolescent years back in full fragrance and color. The truth is, it is rare for untutored journal writers and travelers to actually record more than generalities like, had a delicious meal last night with James and Charlotte, or, the countryside was beautiful. Most record keepers forget the very details, the mussels followed by apple strudel, the boundless lime fields of wheat, the encounter with a gypsy, the ponderings about beauty that would cause the experience to live in the reader's mind. I have written chance particulars a field notebook for field notebook keepers, to rectify this predicament. Through 11 chapters that spotlight the different sorts of material that make for rich accounts, 
My aim is to ensure that the holder will keep a notebook so rich that the writing and the essays and stories that may later come from the jottings will fall off the page like ripe plums.